What's going on guys? There we're showing you how to install the latest version of Ubuntu Linux 23.04. So this is really simple. We're going to show you how to do this in VirtualBox. This will work on both your Mac, your PC, or maybe even another machine like a Linux uh, base or Solaris or something like that. So it's really simple. It's 100% free. Let's show you how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to download a couple of items. So number one, of course, is VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a free virtualization software that allows you to run virtual operating systems on your computer. So it's kind of like running a different system in an application. You'll see what it is here in a moment. But VirtualBox is free virtualbox.org you click on this big blue button that says download and then depending on whether or not what your computer is so for example I'm on a Mac to make this video I'll click on the Mac OS Intel host right here so the latest version of VirtualBox is 7.0.10 at the time we're recording this video so I'll click on that if you're on a Windows PC you'll click on Windows but you just click on this link and it will start to download it for you. Once that downloads, you open up the DMG file, the executable, and you install it like you would any other application. And once you get it installed, it'll open up and it'll look something like this. Now yours probably is not going to have Windows 10 because, well, I've already created a virtual machine. Yours might look a little something like this. Welcome to VirtualBox, create a new machine, all that kind of stuff so that's what yours will look like but before we can create a new virtual machine we need a copy of Ubuntu so what we're gonna do is head over to ubuntu.com and you'll see there's a little download one up here and we're looking for the desktop version so we'll click on this link right here Scroll down a little bit. Now you're gonna see 22.04.2. That is the long-term support version for 2022. This one, however, is the latest and greatest 23.04. So this is the one that we would want. So you'll click on this green download button over here. It'll begin installing and then you'll be good to go. Now this is kind of a big download. Uh, it's, I believe it's about five ish gigabytes. So depending on your internet speed, uh, this could take a little while. So just kind of sit back and relax while that uh, downloads for you. But after you do that, we can then start the process of creating a virtual machine. Now this might look a little intimidating at first, but I promise you guys, it's really not too bad at all. So let's go ahead and walk through this process. So first thing we'll do, of course, is hit this new button right here. And this is where we're gonna start our little thing here process. So first thing we're gonna do is come up with a name for our virtual machine. Now this name is actually what's going to appear over here on this left hand side. So if you're going to have a bunch of virtual machines or maybe you're going to have multiple instances of Ubuntu, you might want to name this pretty specific. So uh, I'm just going to call it what I do the rest of my operating systems. I'm just going to call it what it is, Ubuntu 23.04. Uh, and then it's going to automatically recognize that down here, Linux and 64-bit Ubuntu. Now the rest of these things here, you can kind of leave them the same. Uh, really don't worry about anything here so we'll hit next on that now you saw on this screen back here uh, you want to kind of take note of the system requirements so for 22.04 it's the same for 23 so they recommend a 2 gigahertz dual core processor or better 4 gigs of memory and 25 gigs of hard drive space so VirtualBox doesn't quite know those exactly yet. So VirtualBox has us plugged in at two gigs of RAM. So the thing is here, you're gonna be using your host machine's hardware to run this virtual machine. So my MacBook Air has a total of 16 gigs of RAM and you can see that indicated right there. 16384 megabytes is about 16 gigs of RAM. 
So when you look right here, they have it set to two gigs of RAM and they have one CPU. Well, the website says we need a two gigahertz dual core processor and four gigs of memory. I will say that Linux is kind of more forgiving on system requirements. I've ran this virtual machine just fine with only two gigs and one CPU. Uh, you could bump that up if you would like, but for now, I think I'm gonna just keep it uh, right here where it's at. We might bump up the RAM just a little bit, actually. So I think I'm gonna bump up the RAM. Uh, let's see, let's just go 4096. That is about four gigs of RAM. The good news is you can change this at any time. So don't feel like this is set in stone, don't freak out. You can change it at any time. And I'll show you uh, that here in a moment. But you'll definitely want to adjust this after you get your virtual machine going because you may notice that your machine is running slower than it should or something like that. So you can adjust this for now, but I probably wouldn't go over two CPUs. I wouldn't go over half of your total system memory so in this case i wouldn't go over eight gigs that's way too much so hit next create a virtual hard disk you can see they do have that 25 gigs of free hard drive space input it linux really doesn't need that much space so it's kind of nice to know but i am going to bump this up a little bit to 64 gigs that's just a personal preference of mine and this is important to note though you cannot change this setting. So whatever you put right here for the virtual hard disk, that's what it's gonna take up, okay? And that's literally all you can do unless you delete the machine and start all over. So you don't wanna do that. So think about what you're gonna be using your virtual machine for. If you're gonna be storing a lot of files and programs or things like that on it, you might wanna bump that up more than the 25 gigs that they recommend because you can't change it. So set that to whatever you would like and hit next. It's gonna give you a nice summary here of what you just did and finish on that. And now, as you can see, we have our virtual machine. It's created, it's over here, we can see it. Now let's adjust some settings. So go into settings and this is where I'll show you where everything can be changed, obviously. So if you go to system, you notice there is that RAM right there, so we can adjust that back down to whatever we want or increase it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that is uh, pretty nice there. I always like to uncheck floppy because, well, we don't need a floppy disk. I put that wrong. 40, 96, okay. Then we can go right here to processor. So this is where you can bump up your processor if you want it to. Uh, so we can bump that up to two if we desired. But like I said, just kind of see how yours is running before you mess with that stuff. Display, uh, video memory, I like to bump that all the way up. It just makes things run better. And Linux can definitely handle that on like Windows. So uh, yeah, bump that up. And we should be good. Should be everything we need to adjust there. So now we're gonna click that start button and it's going to power up our VM. Now this is probably going to pop up on my other display, it just does that, I have no idea why. But what this is going to do, first off, it's going to fail, and it's going to tell us that there's no bootable medium found. And the reason why is because that's true, we didn't tell it what to boot from. But once this does fail, um, we will select what we need to here. So as you can see, no bootable medium. So go right here to this drop down and you're going to navigate over on this other thing so click that and now you're going to go to wherever you stored the ubuntu download iso file that we downloaded earlier chances are it's probably your downloads i like to save my software into different folders and things just to have it for the future use so that's where mine is but just find it wherever it is stored on your computer and you'll hit open you're going to click this mount and retry boot and now this time it should be able to boot up here there we go so now you're going to see it says try to install ubuntu okay that's what we're going to do so hit the enter key 
And as you can see, we're now on the loading screen here. So we'll go ahead and give that a moment to load up. First prompt here, a little preparing Ubuntu screen came up and then you get your first setup question. So yeah, now we're just gonna kinda go through this setup process like you would anything else. So English for me, and then we're gonna hit the install right there. That's what we wanna do. We don't wanna just try it, we wanna install it. Choose your keyboard layout, and we're gonna use a wired connection because that's what VirtualBox sees it as. They use your Wi-Fi kinda, it's kinda complicated, but they, they see it as a wired connection, so we we'll wanna just select that. And then, which apps would you like to install? So, I personally like to do a minimal install. Uh, but you can choose which one of these you would like. You can see that this gives you the office, open office software, games, media players, minimal install, web browser, and the utilities. So I like to just do that. You can do whichever one of these you want. And then these boxes right here, we do not need to check those boxes. Do not check these. Uh, we're going to install VirtualBox Guest Editions, which will take care of the graphics and hardware. Now this next one here might freak you out a little bit, don't worry. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. It's just talking about that virtual hard disk that we created earlier. Remember that 64 gig one that I made? That's what it's talking about. So choose that one and hit next. It's gonna kind of confirm what you're about to do here. That's totally fine, hit install. So I'm gonna ask you to select your time zone. So it's probably already gonna be right, but you can just figure it out there. And then it's going to ask you to set up your computer account. So you just type in your name. Make sure your computer name is what you want. Your username. And then you have to put a password in with Ubuntu. I'm just going to put a very bad password. Uh, make sure yours looks better than that. <laughs> and then you can choose to whether to require your password uh, to log in. Um, and then yeah, we'll hit next again. And then you get to choose light or dark mode. That's such an easy decision for me because I like dark mode. And now we are finally installing Ubuntu. So it's going to copy all the files. It's going to install everything. It's probably going to restart a few times. So this could take a little bit of time here. So we'll come back whenever this gets completed or not we want to go ahead and restart now so you click that and then you're going to get this message that says please remove the installation medium and then press enter well all you have to do is press enter because there's no uh, thing that we have to physically remove so we're going to drag it back down here and give it a second you're going to get a lot of those like random kind of prompts that pop up like that don't worry about them it's just part of it here, so you just kind of got to give it a second to load. And it's really annoying that this keeps popping up on my other screen of desktop now. As you can see, we got connect your online account, so you don't have to do that. You can skip that, and then it's going to ask you if you want to help improve. No, we're not going to send any diagnostics. You can if you want, but I'm not going to do it. And then it's going to ask you about location services. They're off by default. You should probably keep them off. No need for those. And then you can see it just letting you know some apps that you can download in the Ubuntu software store. And that is pretty much it for that part. You're probably going to get the little software update thing pop up. So you can go ahead and hit that as well. Uh, there's one more thing we want to do here. Um, before we actually start using VirtualBox uh, in Linux here, or Linux in VirtualBox, is we want to install the guest editions. Now these are going to allow us to have a proper screen resolution and it's going to allow the virtual machine to be able to access some of your hardware and virtualize it a little bit better so things will run much smoother. So I believe on Linux we got to do this through the terminal if I remember correctly. So. We'll go up here to Devices, and we'll click on this Insert Guest Editions CD Image. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to put it in here. It's going to pop up for us um, right here. So we can go ahead and click on the disk over here and let it open up. So this is the file I believe that we actually are going to want right here. But if you just right click in here in this window, you can then hit open in terminal and you'll get uh, this little prompt here. So it'll be a sudo command and then we're going to type in vbox I'm trying to remember the file name. Linux additions. Did I spell additions right? I have no idea. We're going to say that that's right and then hit dot run. And we're going to enter our computer password that we set earlier. Okay, it looks like I spelled the file slightly wrong there. Oh my goodness. Vbox. Linux additions dot run. Okay, we got it. <laughs> you gotta make sure you type it exactly how it says. Obviously the name of the file exactly. So the first time I didn't put a capital B on box. And then the second time I didn't space uh, the command there, the sudo, I didn't space it. So yeah, just type sudo space period uh, forward slash vbox linux edition start run and then it's going to run that installation file install everything so we're going to give it a minute to get through that process and then the terminal will let you know uh, when it is completed so when you see uh, this line where it shows your name and all that you're good to exit out of here we can uh exit out of this and actually eject it but we need to do a restart so click up here and power and we'll go ahead and restart and once we do that everything should be uh working properly so let's see what it looks like when it restarts here and the way to see if your guest edition is installed properly is to just resize your window. And if it automatically adjusts screen resolution here, then you are good to go. And as you can see, you can now go full screen as well. And everything looks very, very nice. So that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you have any issues. Put them down in the comments below and I'll try to help you the best that I can. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching the channel, supporting the videos. Be sure to click that subscribe button, like this video, and I will catch you all in the next one.